Mr. Heffern here, and here's a video on Pascal's principle. So, um, one of the definitions could be pressure is transmitted undiminished in an enclosed static fluid. So, for example, here we have a piston system, a hoist system, uh, where there'd be a pressure exerted on this side of the system here that would propagate or move all the way through the system to the other side where the piston would then lift the car. Okay, so Pascal's principle, in an enclosed pneumatic or hydraulic system, the pressure is the same everywhere. If pressure is changed somewhere, the change propagates through the system quite quickly, and eventually all parts of the system share the same pressure. So for example, uh, if this worker exerts 100 pounds per square inch of pressure over on this side, then uh, that'll work its way through to be 100 pounds per square inch here, 100 psi over there and here, and also on the piston, which would then lift the car. In a hydraulic system where you have a, a liquid like water or oil or hydraulic, hydraulic fluid, um, the changes are quite quick. In a pneumatic system where you're using air or some type of, um, of gas, it's a lot slower. So in a uh, Pascal's principle, it states the pressure on all the pistons must be the same in an enclosed fluid system, whether it's hydraulic or pneumatic. So here's the formula for that. Uh, the pressure on piston A would be equal to the pressure on piston B. And uh, pressure is force divided by area. So you take the force on piston A, divide by the cross-sectional area of the piston. And that's equal to the force on the other piston divided by its cross-sectional area. So uh, as you can see, the pistons are cylinders. And um, what you need to look for is the circular area underneath the piston, the cross-section. So, here's an example. How much force does a worker need to exert on a piston of radius 10 centimeters to lift an 1800 kilo vehicle atop a piston of radius 2 meters? So here we got the Pascal's principal formula, and I'm just going to start filling it in. So, um, radius, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're going to have a pi r squared for both area formulas. And uh, we're lifting the weight of the car, which is equal to... Um, the mass times the gravitational constant g. If we rearrange the CI uh, equation, we're going to get uh, 2,000 kilos for the mass times 9.8 newtons per kilo for g. And then we've cross multiplied the pi r squared over, so we're going to have a pi 0 0.10 meters, which is the 10 centimeters squared, divided by pi and 2 meters, per se uh, meters squared. So the two pi's are going to cancel out. And uh, when you work this out, all you need is 49 newtons. And if you uh, convert newtons to pounds by multiplying by 2.2 divided by 9.8, that's exactly 11 pounds of force to lift the car. So you can lift this uh, 2,000 kilo car, which weighs 4,400 pounds, using just 11 pounds of pressure, uh, of force. What's the catch, though? So if you want to raise the car 11 centimeters, you would have to actually uh, pump the pump 4,400 centimeters. That's why you wouldn't use a hand pump, you'd use a mechanical pump to do this. And uh, why is this? This is really the law of conservation of energy. So the work that you put into the system by pumping down is equal to the work you get out of the system, which lifts the car. And since the car weighs more, there's more force involved, uh, then it can't move as much to have the same amount of joules coming in as the joules coming out. Remember, uh, work is force times distance or displacement. So uh, here is another example here. So let's say uh, we'll use imperial units this time. How much can uh, a child lift with a toy hoist if the pistons A and B have radii of 0.5 inches and 2 inches respectively, and the child pushes with 10 pounds of force? So here we got Pascal's uh, principle again. Pressure on the A side equals the pressure on the B side. Force divided by area on the A side equals force divided by area on the B side. And so this time the force by the child is 10 pounds, and the child has a piston of 0.5 inches, which we're going to square. And on the other side, we're going to see how many pounds we can lift if we have uh, two square inches, two inches squared over here. And it works out to be 160 pounds, which is quite a bit. So the child can really uh, get a lot of force out of this. So the child can lift a 160 pound toy car, which is ridiculously heavy, using just 10 pounds of force. Uh, but for every one inch the car is raised, the child will have to pump like 16 inches. So uh, if the pump moves 8 inches, so if there's an 8-inch uh, movement within the pump, you'd have to pump it twice to get uh, one inch 
uh, of the car and moved up. So in summary, uh, pressure is transmitted undiminished in an enclosed static fluid. So an enclosed pneumatic or hydraulic system quickly has the same pressure everywhere within the system if a, a piston is moved to raise or lower the pressure. And uh, so here's Pascal's principal formula again. Uh, here's just an example of a hoist system. You see the hydraulic fluid in here. And you can also see the same thing in a, like a brake pedal. So the, uh, you apply the brake pedal, hits the master cylinder, and then that uh, pressure is exerted through to push the brake pads onto the, uh, onto the disc to slow down the tire. All right, so I hope this helps, uh, and good luck with your studies in physics.